Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to do an unboxing and setup video for the Ledger Nano S Plus. At $79, it's one of the most inexpensive, secure, and easy to use crypto hardware wallets on the market right now. So dive in with me, I'll show you how to get it set up, funded, and into action. So let's get started. All right, so here's the Ledger Nano S Plus. Okay, you've got your device, you get some instructions, and you get some secret recovery seed phrase cards. You get three, maybe you might make a mistake, or maybe you wanna have more than one, but we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna do one today. You can set your device up completely offline if you want to. I've got a little charging cable here. Uh, the Ledger Nano S Plus does not have battery, so you're gonna have to plug it into something. You can plug it into your computer, it's perfectly safe. Or if you're one of the super security minded, while you're setting it up, just plug it into uh, a USB charger, or something of that nature. As long as it's a USB-C cable. All right, they do include a USB-C cable here, uh, C to A but I find it a little bit short, so I'm just gonna use my own cable. It doesn't matter. It's just a standard USB interface. All right, so you're gonna write your seed phrase down on a card. There are other ways to record it. You can put it on a piece of paper. As long as you write legibly and keep the words in order, make sure they're numbered. It's very important. This backup phrase will be able to restore the wallet if something happens to the hardware. I, that's the biggest question I get. What if this thing breaks? If this thing breaks, then you have a backup phrase. You can use it to restore to any other device. All right, so this is the initial setup screen. It's going to walk you through a few things about uh, the interface on the device. You've got the two buttons up here. You'll be able to use those to navigate. If you see a little side arrow there, that means that there are more choices in this direction, so you can just hit the button, go to the next one, it gives you all these instructions, tells you to hit both buttons, take you to the next screen, all right, tells you to download Ledger Live, and now we get to this command, which is set up as a new device. You can also restore if you already have a seed phrase, we're going to do the initial setup. Uh, we don't have to download Ledger Live to do this, we can set up the device all by itself. So I'm gonna click both buttons to activate this command and it wants us to choose a pin. So choose a pin that's convenient for you, one that you're gonna remember. Try to keep it simple. Don't get all obsessed with security and choose a pin that you aren't familiar with and then write it down and lose it somewhere, right? Uh, just use a pin that you know and no one else knows. All right, once you've got your pin entered, then it wants you to write down your recovery phrase. Click both buttons, and then you'll get to this screen, and you see the arrow there. That means you should use the right button. It's gonna give you some instructions. It'll tell you to press both buttons, and it's going to show you the first word in your list with number one next to it. So get out your card, write down each word in the correct slot. Just advance to the next word. Once you've done that, by clicking the button here, it'll take you to the second word. Just write that down. Go to the third word, write that down, all the way through till 24. All right, once you have all of the words written down, you'll advance over to this last area here, press both buttons, and then it wants us to confirm the recovery phrase. So refer to your list, your numbered list, and just go through it's going to show you a series of words for number one. As you can see there, it's got about four different words for the number one slot. So all you have to do is go to your uh, list and choose that word of these four. There it is. I'll click both buttons and just do the same thing for the rest of the words. All right? It's just going to show you four different words. Just make sure you choose the word you have written down on your list. Pretty simple. All right, once you've gone through that verification process, it'll give you some more instructions. Just navigate to where you get to press both buttons to continue. 
and now your device is initialized and ready to roll. All right, just advance over and then click go to the dashboard. You'll click both buttons to do that. And you should see the home screen here with the settings icon and the plus icon. Um, I've got a little, a uh, couple of things I like to do. If you hold down both buttons, it's going to take you into the command center. I like to go into the settings and then go over to security and turn off the pin lock. Uh, the pin lock is a security feature that locks the device. If you haven't touched it in 10 minutes, I find it a little irritating when I'm doing work to have to constantly enter my pin to unlock the device. So I like to turn that off and you can also do the same thing with the screensaver. Click both buttons and then just navigate to no screensaver and then uh, you can back out and back to the home screen. These are security features that keep the device physically secure when they're in your presence so that they don't just stay on. But my security is to simply unplug the device when I'm done using it. That way, while I'm using it, I don't have that irritation of having to constantly re-enter my pin every five or 10 minutes. Now we want to go over to Ledger Live and download the companion software that you can use to set up and configure and manage your crypto wallets. So make sure you're at ledger.com. Let's go over here to apps and services and go over to the Ledger Live section. Download the Ledger Live for your platform. I'm going to download the Windows version. You can drop it in your downloads folder. After you've got that downloaded, just go ahead and open up that downloads folder and double click. All right, go ahead and install Ledger Live and then we're ready to go. All right, and so the first time you run Ledger Live, you'll be presented with this screen. So in anticipation of our setup, let's go ahead and get our device connected. This time I'm gonna definitely connect it directly to my computer using a USB cable. It can be the one that came with it or you can use any USB-C cable. Get your pin entered. And as I showed you earlier, you'll start on this uh, desktop setup screen, right? This is what we might refer to as the home screen of the device. Let's hit get started. Uh, choose your device. I'm gonna choose the Ledger Nano S Plus. And uh, it is our first time using the device, but we've already set up the seed phrase. We have a recovery phrase, we've already written it down, so we'll just skip over to this part. This is kind of a tutorial of the stuff I already got you through, right? We don't need to do that part. Just go to connect your Ledger Nano S Plus. All right, we've got our device connected, we have our pin entered, and then we'll do the genuine check. The genuine check is a cryptographic handshake that confirms that the device is in fact made by Ledger. It's a genuine Ledger device, also that it has not been tampered with. So uh, we'll click these two buttons to allow the secure connection and let it do the genuine check. This means that you don't have to worry if your box is a little bit frayed or if it looks like it's open and you're all weirded out, you think someone's tampered with your device. All of that stuff is moot. This puts your mind at rest. This is a cryptographic handshake. An, an altered device will not pass this genuine check. So once you have gotten through this, you know you have a genuine device that has not been tampered with. Let's hit continue. And then we're getting to the home screen of Ledger Live. I'm not going to uh, s sign up for the recovery service. You can if you want to. All right, and this is the main screen of Ledger Live. Notice it's taken me to the My Ledger section. This is where we deal with the device apps itself. Now, we can install some of these right here if we want to, but Ledger Live and the device is smart enough to install the app for you as you're adding accounts. So let's go to Portfolio and choose Add Account. I'm gonna quickly add three different accounts. Think of the accounts as wallets, for indeed they are. Uh, it's just a level of abstraction, right? 
This little device that I'm holding in my hand, you can think of as a hardware wallet, but more accurately, it is a keychain for all of your crypto wallets are, that you're going to create here in Ledger Live. So we'll start with add account. We'll, we'll do Bitcoin first. Just click continue. Notice what happens in Ledger Live. Ledger Live is connecting to your device and it sees that there's no Bitcoin app. So it's going to install it for you automatically. And then it's going to tell you to go ahead and open it up. So uh, in order to open the Bitcoin app, we'll hit both buttons, All right? It's going to scan your device for any existing Bitcoin accounts. This is a brand new device, so it's not going to find any existing accounts. It's just going to offer you the option of setting up uh, an empty Bitcoin account, right? There are other options here for other types of Bitcoin accounts, Taproot, Segwit, or Legacy. I would recommend just using native Segwit. It's the newest and most easiest to use, um, quicker with lower fees than the other types of accounts. So I'll hit add account and I'm done. I've got a Bitcoin account set up. I can go to accounts and see there's my Bitcoin account. Let's add two more accounts. I'm going to add an Ethereum account so we can uh, store some Ethereum in here. It checks, it sees there's no Ethereum app and so it installs it for me. All right, you'll see the progress on my device. All right, and now it wants me to open the, the Ethereum app. I'll click both buttons to open the Ethereum app. It's going to scan my device for any existing accounts. Of course, it's a brand new device. There are no existing accounts. It's just going to set up an empty wallet for me. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just taking the numbers off, All right? And then we're done with that. Now you can see I have two different accounts. Uh, Ledger Live refers to them as accounts, but you can think of them as wallets, right? Let's hit add account again, and this time I'll use Solana. I just want to kind of give you uh, an overview of managing multiple accounts in Ledger Live. It's going to check to see if I have the Solana app, and if it doesn't find the Solana app, it will automatically install it. Uh, once we get here, we'll hit both buttons to open the Solana app. All right, and we can call this whatever we want. I'm just going to erase the one. And now I've got three crypto wallets set up for three different types of cryptocurrency. I'm going to show you how to fund these accounts from an exchange. So let's transfer some Bitcoin from Coinbase into our wallet. That's the whole idea. We want to store our cryptocurrency in our wallet and not leave it on an exchange. So we'll go into the Bitcoin account or wallet. The best way to think of it is wallet here. Let's hit receive and then continue. All right, it asks us to open the Bitcoin app. Make sure you've got your device connected and the pin entered. And it's going to give us a Bitcoin receiving address. This is the public receiving address of your Bitcoin wallet. Think of it as your home address or your PO box address. It's where you will send Bitcoin when you want to hold it in your wallet. We'll go back over here to Coinbase. We'll go into the Bitcoin account. We can go here to primary balance and do a send. I just want to send $100 worth of Bitcoin and I'll do a preview send here. All right, and now I need to select the recipient. So I'll click in the to field and here is where I want to paste in the address of my wallet, right? You'll uh, look at the address, you'll see it down here, just click on it. And now you've got the address of your wallet in Coinbase. You will also see the address on your device. You can verify that by looking at your device and Coinbase and Ledger Live. You can verify all of this, make sure it's all correct. And if you're just doing this for the first time, I highly recommend using a small test amount. Let's hit preview send. There is a small blockchain fee associated with Bitcoin transfers. Uh, in today's case, it's pretty small. All right, and then at the, uh, in the last step, you'll wanna just double check everything, make sure everything looks right. 
You can also see that sending address one more time that you can uh, confirm on your device. So let's click Send Now. All right, I have two-factor enabled. All right, and I'm done. All right, we can go back here and just finish off this confirmation of the address. Just uh, advance to the next screen and hit Approve, and you're done. All right. I like to leave the address up while I'm doing my transfer to verify everything. So once you're done, you can uh, just click this and now we'll wait for the crypto to come into the wallet. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and do the others. No sense in waiting. Let's hit the Ethereum, we'll do the same thing. Click into the Ethereum wallet, uh, click receive, and then continue. All right, it's going to bomb you out of the Bitcoin app and ask you to open the Ethereum app. All right, so you can verify the address there. It shows you the Ethereum address. It shows it on the device. Uh, slightly different than the Bitcoin app, but that's okay. Just click this button and uh, you can verify the address on your device and on your screen. Um, before, you coll uh, before you finish up on the device, just grab the address, copy it into your clipboard. Let's go over to Coinbase. Basically do the same thing we did before. We'll go into the Ethereum section go to primary balance. You can see I have some Ethereum. I'll go ahead and send the max, but if you're doing this for the first time, always do small test. Don't send five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 worth of crypto without a small test. Uh, we'll click network and recipient. Now, Ethereum is slightly different. It has multiple networks, so you want to make sure that you do both steps, network and recipient. So we'll click here. We'll choose Ethereum. Uh, we're using the main Ethereum chain. Notice the fees are a little high, but don't get tempted to choose one of these alternate networks just because they're cheaper. If you don't know what you're doing, it'll end up somewhere where you can't find it, right? If you have base network set up or Avalanche in a, a third-party wallet or something like that, great. But we're sticking to the basics today. Please choose the Ethereum network. Right, and then paste in the address. And so now we've got the amount, the crypto, and the address set up. Let's hit preview send. We'll hit send now. We'll put in our two factor and off it goes. Remember we paid a little bit uh, of a fee there, but that's part of what crypto is all about, right? There are blockchain fees. All right, let's go ahead and uh, confirm this address. We'll hit approve here and we can get out of this window. All right. And the next one we'll do is Solana. We'll click on the Solana account we'll slash wallet. We'll hit receive. We'll hit continue. And then uh, it's going to take us out of the Ethereum app and ask us to open the Solana app. Click both buttons to open the Solana app. All right, I've copied the address into my clipboard. We'll go back over to Coinbase. I'll go back to My Assets. Scroll down here to Solana. I've got $100 worth of Solana. Okay, uh, we want the primary balance. It's slightly different in Solana. I'll scroll down a little bit. We'll go into the primary balance. And now we want to go ahead and send. I'll do max. And uh, we're going to select the recipient again, paste in that address that we have in our clipboard, and then uh, click down here to fill that address. Notice that we can sort of eyeball it between our device and what we see on our screen here. And then when we get to preview send, we can see the entire address. Just make sure it's the same as the one we see on our device, right? Always be very careful when sending cryptocurrency. I'll hit send now. I'll put in my two-factor, and my Solana is on its way to my wallet. We'll go back to Ledger Live, and we can go ahead and finish out this process. Always do that hardware check to verify the address. Um, it it uh, makes sure that you've got uh, the correct device connected to the correct account. 
Um, I know we, we have one device and one account right now, but things get confusing down the road. So always make sure that you do that hardware check when you're sending crypto into your hardware wallet. All right, now we can go uh, back to the account interface and wait for those cryptos to arrive. All right, I just did a quick synchronization. And as you can see, all three cryptos have arrived in my wallet. Now, if we dive into the Bitcoin, notice there's a little orange arrow here and it says not confirmed. That means that your Bitcoin is still confirming on the blockchain. This does not mean that you don't have it. It just means that it's not spendable yet. Once you see the incoming Bitcoin, you can rest assured that your Bitcoin is safe and secure in your own wallet. We can do the same thing with Ethereum. Uh, it's still confirming on the blockchain. And then we can check our Solana. Notice that it's green because Solana works a little bit faster than those other two chains. So uh, it's already totally confirmed in our Solana wallet. And we will see that uh, green arrow in the other two accounts um, after a little while. So don't get nervous when you see that orange uh, not confirmed. It just means that it has to confirm on the blockchain. All right, and you can go into the portfolio section and you can see your cryptocurrencies and you can see your total balance in US dollars. All right, so now that we've got the crypto in our wallet, uh, I'm going to show you how to get it out of the wallet. A lot of people get their wallet set up, they get their crypto in, and then they're mystified about how to get it out. So I would be remiss if I didn't show you how to get your crypto out of the wallet. So you'll need to have your device connected and your pin entered before you start doing this. All right, so we'll start with the Bitcoin. We wanna send it somewhere else. We wanna send it out from the wallet. In this example, let's just send it right back to Coinbase where we bought it. You might want to do this down the road if you decide you want to sell your Bitcoin. You can send it back out. So let's go over to Coinbase. Let's tell them that we're going to make a transfer and we're going to receive crypto. Right? We're receiving crypto into our Coinbase account. Now, Bitcoin is the default, so it's just going to show up right away. There is the Bitcoin address of my Coinbase account. Yours will be different, All right? I'll just copy that into my clipboard. I'll go back over to Ledger Live. Let's go into the Bitcoin wallet and do a send. All right, I'll paste in that Bitcoin address of my Coinbase account. We'll hit continue. And in this case, I'm just gonna send the max. You can choose the speed uh, I usually leave mine at medium. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's going to cost me about a dollar in Bitcoin blockchain fees right now. You can open your Bitcoin app first if you want to by clicking both buttons. But when you're in Ledger Live and you attempt to do a Bitcoin transaction, it will automatically tell you to go ahead and launch the Bitcoin app. There's the overview of what we're about to do. There's that address I'm sending to. You can uh, double check that. Just eyeball it, make sure it's the same address. We'll hit continue. Notice the device indicates that I need to open the Bitcoin app, so I'll hit both buttons here. Now at this point, we are using the device to authorize our transactions. In order to send any Bitcoin out of the wallet, the device needs to authorize. That's the devices like the car keys. You can't drive the car without the keys. Notice here there's a little arrow which indicates we can go to the side. There's the amount of Bitcoin. We'll hit the button again. There's the address we're sending to. And then we'll hit both buttons to continue. Now we need to authorize the Bitcoin fees. We'll hit the button to uh, advance to the next screen. And then we'll hit both buttons to authorize the transaction. All right, and we can view the details uh, over in the corner here with what we just did. Uh, we can view that on the Blockchain Explorer by clicking this link. I'm just going to close this. Uh, now let's go over to the Ethereum this time. And uh, we need a destination. So we'll go back to Coinbase. 
we'll just we can start at transfer we'll say receive crypto again and right here we can choose the type of cryptocurrency so you can uh, do a search here all right find the cryptocurrency you want to send and they'll give you an address all right we are receiving this on the ethereum network so we don't need to switch networks we can just leave it on ethereum just copy this into our clipboard go back over to ledger live in our ethereum wallet we'll click send we'll paste in the address of our coinbase account we'll hit continue and then i'll just go ahead and send the max again when i hit continue once more it'll give us an overview we'll hit continue again and then it will ask us to open the ethereum app we'll click both buttons to do that all right we have to sign the transaction on our device once again we'll just hit the button advance through all of that information and then hit accept and send slightly different than the bitcoin app but basically the same process once again we can hit view details to see what we just did and then we can close this out all right we'll go back to accounts and this time we'll send that solana back all right we need to go over to coinbase to get the destination uh, we can just keep this window here and switch to solana all right because so we're doing the same thing we're receiving solana into our coinbase account i'll copy this address into my clipboard we'll go back over here we'll do a send we'll paste in the address this account not funded it's just detecting the account on the other end and the nature of solana accounts on exchanges uh, makes the wallet think that it's not funded um, or it's a zero balance but it's just a warning it's nothing to worry about uh, it will work just fine we'll just hit continue here i'll go ahead and send the max again i'll hit continue once more there's our overview notice how cheap our solana fees are very cheap that's why solana is one of the up-and-coming cryptocurrencies we'll hit continue and then we need to authorize on our device it indicates it wants us to open the solana app we'll click both buttons all right there's the information and we just need to advance forward here by clicking the button there's the recipient address and then we'll just click approve by clicking both buttons and off it goes all right once again if we want to view t details we can click um, i can dismiss this and there we go i've sent out all three if i hit sync you should see that i have zero balance on everything now sometimes when you send the max the fee calculation is just an estimate so you'll find a little bit of dust left in your wallet this is really nothing to be concerned about uh, most people will just hold their crypto long term in their wallets but I did want to show you how to move crypto out of the wallet. It's one of the vital skills you're going to need to master in order to manage your crypto. You should be comfortable with sending crypto into the wallet and sending crypto back out of the wallet. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.